Hey guys, this is John here with Forward Talk. We have a brand new, brand new episode uh, for you where we are in collaboration with the Kingdom Link podcast. We're here with Pastor Tim Gill and Pastor David Gill, and we are going to be talking to them about Kingdom Link, what it is, what the purpose, what the vision is for their podcast. And if you have not yet subscribed to the Kingdom Link podcast, please take the opportunity to do that. They are on iTunes. They are on Podbean. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, iHeartRadio, various yes. places. Uh, go subscribe to their podcast. They do um, wonderful, wonderful work. They've interviewed some some great preachers, have some great episodes. So please take the opportunity to go subscribe to their podcast. But for today on Forward Talk, we, we want them to to give them the opportunity to talk about their vision and what their mission for a Kingdom Link is. So I guess at the beginning, can we just uh, give you the opportunity to talk about what the name Kingdom Link means, What what's Kingdom, what's Link, okay. how do they go together, what does that look like for the right. vision for the podcast? All right. Uh, uh, absolutely. So uh, Kingdom Link was a, a kind of birthed in an idea that I had uh, about a year ago probably now. <laughs> Uh, and it all started just over a family dinner. <clears throat> so uh, at the time, we're just eating, we're talking, and then my brother-in-law, who's uh, our, associate, our associate pastor here in Medora, uh, Timothy Gother, he just looked at me and he just said, David, uh, do you have an outlet? And he said, I believe ministers should have an outlet. And that really made me start to think, wow, uh, I, I, what if I did have an outlet? And then the next few days, it started growing on me uh, a specific topic that I would like to cover and that is the sometimes we see that there's a rift between generation uh, leaders and ministers. So what I mean by that, uh, sometimes the secession planning from older to younger, and then the working with the younger to older leaders and ministers, we sometimes there's uh, uh, there's like differences that they that there are between the two generations, and it causes uh, hurt in the church, hurt in. Uh, the people's lives. And so that's something that I really wanted to talk about. And so I just walked up to dad and I said, dad, you want to start a podcast? <laughs> and from there we just yeah. grew like that. And it moved from the idea to, okay, what are we going to be doing? What, what's, uh, what's our vision? What's our focus? And, and you know, what you name something is important. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it, it speaks to what we're trying to do. And so we, we talked about words like bridge, you know, we want to bridge the gap, but that's really not what what we were t that speaks of separation yeah mm -hmm. uh that has a, an artificial thing uh, connecting it which is okay yeah. we, we often use that we're going to bridge the gap between generations but the concept is is link uh because a link like a chain if you have a missing link you can't do work right that's right Absolutely. if there's a missing link between the older generation and the younger generation then all of a sudden the uh, ability to be effective is lost and so I think it's important to have that. It's it 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 is borne out in the Levitical priesthood. Yes, sir. That there was a constant turnover from one generation to, to another, and so it was very uh, uh, essential to have that passing on. Mm -hmm. And even creation tells us that God created things to reproduce after their kind. Yes, sir. Right. And so I believe that whatever God's called you to be, and whoever God's called you to be. <clears throat> You ought to be investing yourself to basically work yourself out of a job. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So yes, whatever, sir. if you're a Sunday school teacher, you should mm -hmm. be investing in the next Sunday, Sunday school, school teacher. Teacher. If you're a musician, you ought to be investing in another musician. Yes, sir. And if you're a minister or uh, something of that nature, whatever maybe your calling is, your kingdom assignment, mm -hmm. then invest in that. And that's what Kingdom Link is about. It's right. about bringing together and getting aspects from both points of view. Yes, sir. And, and the thing about that is that we think that secession planning is only for the older generation. Uh, the, dad is, I'm going to kind of brag on my father for a little bit, he has a gift on leadership planning and succession. He has always had vision to see the best in other people down the road. And so that's been something that he's put into me. So even now as a young uh 
I'm the youth minister here at our church. I'm looking for the next person who's going to take my role, yes, sir. even at 21 years of age. Yes, sir. You know, just because that's how the kingdom is minded, is to always be pushing for it. And I don't want to be a hindrance to that. I don't want to be the one that causes that drama or that yeah. rift between the generations. Yeah. So can so can you uh, talk about what uh, what you think or how you see a healthy generational transfer? How how you see that playing out? You know, one, one of our favorite scriptures uh, in in church is Jesus said, "Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it." And yes, that's sir. great preaching. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can take it from all kinds of standpoints and yes, things. Sir. But really, what he said there is the grave. Yeah. That the grave will not prevail against this church. Oh yeah. So a death of one leader doesn't stifle the growth from the next. Right. But the problem lies is that, uh, you know, the most valuable place, the most valuable piece of property in all the world is not the oil fields of East Texas. It's not, uh, you know, oil or gold in Africa. It's the graveyards of our world. Yes, sir. Because buried in those graveyards are books that were never written. Yes, sir. Leaders that never passed on their knowledge. They went to their grave with their baton in their hand. Absolutely. Yes, and and to me, if you do not pass your baton on in, in ministry, then your leadership dies with you. Mm -hmm. Your vision dies with you. Right. Your, your passion dies with you. And so I think it's very important uh. that uh, we, we, we set ourselves up because... There are things that, like like in the case of those ministers that I work with here, David and the, uh, the other pastoral staff that we're working with, is that I want to empty everything that I have into them. Yes, sir. You know, uh, we've go, gone away, and um, David mentioned about uh, Timothy Gother. He's our associate pastor. He's a fantastic preacher. Absolutely. And so we would be gone, and I'd come back. And people be bragging about, man, what a great service we had. Pastor Timothy did an amazing job. And I look at him, I say, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Because to me, I take that not as a uh, 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 a statement that should hurt me. But as a personal compliment. But as a compliment. Yes, sir. Because I want every person that God puts in my path to lead to excel. Uh, yes, I sir. I want to set them up to win. Yes, sir. That doesn't mean I'm always giving them flowery advice Some that's, that's but, tugging on the coattail <laughs> but i do think that it's very uh important to pass on uh what we have don't let it die with you yes sir. no and so i'm going to kind of combine that uh generational transfer uh concept with the pastoral transfer concept okay. so as a as an elder as an elder leader pastor what um what is it that you expect to to uh, be passed down to the next generation for you to feel comfortable with the next generation leading forward. So as you started out talking um, that sometimes there is conflict, sometimes there's a rift mm -hmm. between one generation to yes. the next. So I guess the question that I want to want to ask is, from your perspective as the the elder that's going to be passing leadership, that's going mm -hmm. to be transferring. I don't know who the next pastor is going to be. I don't even know if you guys know, but whoever that is, that that you shift the pastoral leadership of the church to, what is it that they need to to have, believe, preach, think, that is going to make you comfortable releasing that leadership into their their hands? And what are some things that? Uh, from your perspective, would cause that tension and conflict to be in place with the next generation? Well, I think it begins with the the elder. Where is his identity? Hmm. If his identity is in the pulpit where he pastors, yes, sir. then when he leaves that pulpit, yeah. he's seen his identity gone. gone. He no longer feels like his ministry matters. But what has happened is that pastors have made their pastoral ministry their complete identity, and they don't have any kind of a way of thinking beyond that. Yes, sir. To to okay, I'm going to position myself. Let me let me use uh, 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 Bishop Walls, who pastored here for 30 years, and here at the home church. And so when we came in. I ran from that for eight years. He had encouraged me to come, but I ran from it eight years and took took 
I need to go through some process of maturing. And, uh, but when, when I finally obeyed God and I obeyed my pastor and I came here, he already had things in place. He's an author. He's a, does radio mm-hmm. broadcasts. He does missions work. He has, he's a very active in ministry still to this day at the age of 83. Yes, he's sir. very active in ministry. It may not be pulpit ministry yes, or pastoral ministry, but if your identity, it starts with the elder getting, making sure that his planning is about where's my next. Yes. Right. Where's my next? When the time comes for me to step down from this pulpit, where is my next assignment yes, going sir. to be? For me, I don't know exactly what year, you know, yes, but sir. I'm planning now for my future. Yes, sir. As far as in ministry. What am I going to do when what, I'm not pastoring? When I'm what, not pastor, what, what am I going to do? I'm not going to be like, like, like some that I know that says, I'm just quit preaching. Yeah. I'm going to quit, you know, I, I'm done. I'm going to just gonna go retire. First of all, retirement's not in the Bible. It is. No. And so I've learned from both my father and my father-in-law, who are both men of God, as an example, is that, you know, my dad at 80 years old wrote a state, a little, a little statement of his, where he is. And, you know, he said, people tell me to slow down. He said, how can I slow down when people are going to hell? You know, at 80 Just years as old. fast as they've ever gone. Yeah, and, and so he, he also had a, the, a ministry, though he wasn't a pastor. We've narrowed it down that if you're not a pastor, you're not in ministry. That's right. There's a right. whole There's a spectrum whole of ministry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, part of it is, is when, like you said, we pastors tend to see their identity in the pulpit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if they could come to see their identity in their spiritual sons, Amen. when All their right. spiritual sons yeah. start taking taking the leadership role and taking the kingdom forward, yes. they still see themselves as doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's a very a very Jewish Jewish concept. A, a, a man never dies. Right. Mm-hmm. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob becomes uh Israel. Right. Israel is still alive right now today. Mm-hmm. Right. Israel's just alive in right. his sons, right. in his children, in his offspring. Absolutely. Well, you you ask what what as an elder what would I start looking for in a, a young man? Paul put it like this. It's one of the most powerful statements. He said, "I'm sending to you Timothy, <laughs> my son." In the gospel. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Wasn't even related to him, but he said, as my son. Yes. I believe that there is a critical relationship that every man of God needs to have in his life, and that is a father son relationship. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Because, you know, people could say everybody needs a pastor, and that's true, but not everybody that has a pastor has a father son Mm -hmm. relationship that. We're, we're, there's safety in that. Didn't Paul say something about you have many instructors, but you have not many fathers? Not many fathers, right. And so when he sends Timothy, he says something very powerful. He says, I'm sending to you somebody that knows my heart. Yes. Yep. He knows, knows what my I think. vision. He knows what I think. He knows how, how I feel. So how did he know that? Yeah. Because he invested it that's in a, him. That's right. exactly right. He invested right. in him. So, you know, that's what I think that an elder can start doing, and that is... Does he? First of all, is he, if he's not investing in that uh, leader coming up, then don't expect them to keep your vision going. That's right. And if you're not investing in them, you're certainly not going to trust them. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't invested in exactly. Them. And sometimes that's where I think the conflict happens: is the pastor doesn't trust his successor because yes. he hasn't really invested well, in his successor. Well, take David for instance. God said, "You can't build a temple." Yeah. But I'm gonna let your son. If he was like a lot of guys today, well, you go root hard or die, as I used to say in Texas. Yeah, you go do it on yourself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I had to, do, I had to iron everything out. That's I had right. to dig it out. So you go, no, that's not what he did. No, he started gathering material. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. He started gathering things. So what was he doing? He was investing absolutely in his son's that's right. success. Generational momentum, as absolutely. right, been said. right, yeah. So. Um, the next question that I want to, to come to here, and uh, we're going to uh, hit these two questions, and one of them is going to be for you, okay. and then the, the last one is going to be for you. So, uh, Pastor Tim Gill, what is the most important thing that you want as a leader, as an elder, to, co- to communicate to the next generation? What is, what is the one thing that you want 
especially the generation of leaders that you are raising up, your sons, spiritual sons mm -hmm. in the gospel. What is the what is the one thing that you want them to know? What would you want to say most say to that generation? Oh, that's that that's hard to put into one. <laughs> it is one statement. Well, if if, if but I flush it out a little bit. You okay. don't have to, you don't have to like <laughs> boil it down to one thing. Well, I want would want every every young man, every minister of the gospel period is that this is, you got to have a bigger view mm -hmm. than just your ministry. Yeah. This is a kingdom work. You know, uh, we mentioned Paul mentored at Timothy, but Barnabas mentored Paul. Yeah. Yes, okay? sir. Uh, you, you, you think of Moses is that he's, he's known as the greatest leader of all time, but what did he do? Mm -hmm. He handed the baton to Joshua. Yes, sir. Moses messed up and couldn't go in the promised land. Yes, sir. But he didn't let that get irritated in his spirit, but rather he was saying, here is Joshua, and so I'm going to invest in Joshua. And so where did, where did Joshua go? Up on the mountain with him. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, he was with him. And, and, and the way that you mentor young people is not necessarily, and mentor others is not necessarily lecturing. Yeah. It's rubbing shoulders. Yes, sir. Right. It's rubbing shoulders. Being with them every day. Elisha was with Elijah for 11 years. Yes, sir. Pouring water on his hands. Yes, sir. Now that doesn't mean that he was just a, a servant, but what was he doing? He was learning, mentoring, and learning the vision. Because what does he say when he comes to the river after Elijah's gone up to heaven? Okay, Elijah's gone up to heaven. First of all, he follows him all through that meandering yes, process of getting to where Elijah is going to be gone. He yes, knew sir. he was leaving, yes, but sir. he wouldn't let him out of his sight. Okay, he followed him all the way till the chariot comes, takes him up, and he gets the mantle, and he goes back. What does he say? Where is the Lord God yes. of my father? Yes, sir. Mm. Of Elijah. Where is it? So it's it's that that passing it on to others that gives power to the next generation. Yes, sir. And, you know, I have a picture in my office of, of you lay hands one to another, and um, I do believe you can confer yeah, anointing. Absolutely. 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 You confer anointing. Absolutely. When when I came to Medora to pastor, I had one of the greatest Bible teachers in my father-in-law, author, uh, just a, a, a genius with scripture. I had uh, my father here as well, who moved here to live. And he uh, was used mightily in the gifts of the Spirit and teaching, taught Bible colleges all, all over the country. And... I had a man ask me, said, you know, how are you going to wear their shoes? How are you going to fill their shoes? I'm not. And yeah, that, okay. How am I going to fill their yeah. shoes? But I said, Lord, I need an answer. Yeah. I need an answer to that. And he said, I never asked you to fill their shoes. That's right. I want you to wear their mantle. Yeah. All right. Okay. I want you to wear their mantle. Incredible. And so wh whoever follows, it's not about being a cookie cutter like them. That's right. But rather it's that conference of, of gifting the conference of laying on a hands of the presbytery that is so much more. I, I, one of my pet peeves, and I'm sorry for rattling on oh, here, sorry. <laughs> but one of my one of my pet peeves is the this rubber stamping of ordination. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's it got to be personal. It's got to mean a whole much, a whole lot more. So, yeah, for I, I don't think God ever intended for us to be ordaining anyone with whom we don't have personal yeah relationship. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Now. Did that answer the question? Yes, sir. That's I, beautiful. I, I didn't know. I got, I got yes. off on a tangent no, there. No, no, no. no. That's beautiful. Sure and so, so the question now for, for you is, what would you as the younger generation, and this is very personal because for you, your, your elders is, is your, primarily your father. Right. And so there's not just a spiritual relationship here. There's a natural relationship here. So one of the questions, the question I would have is, what is the one thing or an important thing, a major thing that you would like to say to or ask of the previous generation? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily just one specific thing. I can maybe do two. <laughs> do two. That's, that's fine. One is never stop investing in me. Yeah. No matter, you got it. <laughs> no matter how old I am. You know, I, I, I can even see it with, I'm speaking to you, Dad, in you and Papa. I never see Papa stop investing in you. No yeah. matter what, it doesn't matter right. your age, and that's one something I never want you to stop investing in. And that's the thing about this type of leadership, this type of kingdom link. 
yeah. is that you will never stop being his father. No, absolutely. He will never stop being your son. So the thing that qualifies you to feed in his life is is always going to be there. If he's 70 and you're 90 or whatever that would look right. like, you're still <laughs> gonna, it's still going to be father-son. It's, right. it's that relationship. Right. And so, so number one, never stop. Never stop investing. Absolutely. In the, the second one would be trust me. Trust oh, me. Oh, man, this is so good. <laughs> so yeah. the reason being, you taught me, and it is my job yeah. to uphold that. Everything that you taught me, everything that you told right. me, <laughs> let me, I will do my job. Yeah. I, will su- I will plan for the next generation. I will do everything that you have taught me, and I will do everything that I've read in the That's Word good. of God and move on so that yeah. the next generation can do the same. And I think that has a lot to do with the, the releasing of. Uh, we're in this kind of shift right now here at the church, and uh, um, we're, I'm trying to back away mm-hmm. and do the things that only I can do. Yes, sir. So that other men, our other leaders, can do yes, sir. those tasks. Mm-hmm. I think the mentality of a one man operation is unbiblical. Yes, sir. absolutely. Jesus sent them out by twos. Paul traveled in a group. Uh, their safety in numbers, but also I believe it's a kingdom idea. Yes, sir. It's absolutely. a kingdom concept that this is not my church. I'm not building my kingdom here. Yes, sir. So I right. can just leave it to my kids. Yes, sir. And so they can have that. No, I, I want to build the kingdom, and I want them to be a part of that kingdom. I have absolutely. no doubt about it. And that, to me, is important. So, I, Man, that. I love that. Don't stop investing in me and trust, trust me. That's trust. that's incredible. And trust is built by Paul being able to say, I'm sending you Timothy because I trust him. Absolutely. And, and, and the way, go I, ahead. I've given to him. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, I, can't, I can't stress enough the value of legacy. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Legacy is what you leave. Yes, sir. More than just, uh, more than just uh, money and possessions. Yeah. But, what I want to be left, what I want to leave with yeah. is every ounce of gift that I have is given away. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm wrung out. Every ounce of my vision, I, anything and everything that I've known or been taught, yeah. I want to leave it to him so right. he can succeed. And Absolutely. that brings that brings uh, uh, to mind, I'm going to paraphrase uh, a, a verse uh, from Paul in, in clo- kind of closing the episode here, a verse from Paul where he says to Timothy, what I have delivered unto you, Mm-hmm. The same deliver thou also exactly. to faithful men mm-hmm. who, yes. who can teach it teach it to others. It's the two twenty two. Yes, Absolutely, two twenty two. Yes, sir. It's it's Amen. that transfer of um, it's a kingdom concept. It, yes, sir. It's an apostolic concept. Man, thank you guys so much mm-hmm. for being a part of of uh, Forward Talk this episode. Honored and talking Absolutely. to us about what Kingdom Great. Link is all about again, guys. Please go subscribe to their channel. Um, check out some of their other great episodes. Hey, do me a favor, okay. Pastor Tim Gill. Close out this episode of, of Forward Talk with that tagline that you always close out your Kingdom <laughs> Link podcast with. That's awesome. Well, at Kingdom Link, we always end with this, with this line and that leadership only matters when it is passed on. All right, guys. God bless, and thank you both so much for thank being you. a part Great of Forward here. Talk. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.